uh, that's that's a fun that'll be a fun technology. Something like that coming on board for the next expedition. Do you know? I think so. All right. So I if you're think that, yeah, they've been experimenting with uh, with Mesobot and Drix uh, communicating via that. I think. Excellent. Sounds interesting to you. Then uh, Nautilus will be out um, throughout the first half of October around the Hawaiian Islands, uh, coordinating various vehicles and technologies and using some of various kinds of signaling and communications to uh, help help those different vehicles and robots kind of share data and, uh, and uh, cooperate while out on a dive and pretty exciting stuff. That's cool. The benefit of that would be that one you could, like the... What would be the benefit of that that second um, vehicle? Would it be like just the potential, like it, it can do more specialized collections or something? Well, we can. So if you do multi-vehicle operations, then you can send out like Drix, like over the horizon actually, and it can it can map, you know, an area ahead of the ship, you know. And then you send the AUV down, and it can do more detailed mapping in a, in a still cover a lot more ground than we would in with the ROV, and with a lot greater detail than you would get from the shipboard sonar. So, yeah, so I automating think. a lot of that process, uh, you yeah. know, that's uh, that uh, definitely saves on man manpower required and yeah, uh, and sea time, you sea know, time, yeah. You're, you're, Multiplying what you can do over the, you know, I mean, it's expensive to have a ship at sea. So Absolutely. if you can get more th work done at the same time, then yeah, there's benefits to that. Scaling factor is cer certainly interesting thinking about how every sea mount that we approached uh, and every target, including the shipwrecks, right? We'd, I'd go down, see Catalina or one of the other mappers. They're busy mapping while we're you know, as preparation for the dive, but if that could have been done in advance, ahead of time, and we have that data on hand already, then we can get the get the vehicles down on it uh, right away. Pretty interesting. Yeah, can do. People mentioned can do 3D and wide swaths. You can can kind of get different types of imagery and d different kinds of data. Um, not easy, I don't think, to coordinate those multi-vehicle operations. No. I've heard there's been some hiccups in, in the in the software and in the you know some of the components, but it's uh, it's a cool thing to be finally figuring out. Are there any chances for volunteers or for someone to just be a fly on the wall aboard the ship? That's basically me. Uh, yeah, just. Uh, Apply to be a science communication fellow. No, just kidding, Megan. Um, <laughs> if you're listening in, no, it's uh, you know we we don't we do more uh, than that. Yeah, yeah a little more. bit, a little bit. Um, you know, there's uh, everyone on board the ship is is critical to operations. There's not really um, room or resources. Robert was just talking about how expensive it is to do this work. Um, mm -hmm. But if if somebody does want to volunteer their skills and wants to come out and or if they're really excited to learn. The Nautilus is an amazing place to learn. So there's a lot of roles where we take interns, um, and they're not even volunteers. I believe our interns get uh, some kind of compensation as well for their time at sea. So it's it's a it's a pretty uh, pretty awesome place to come and learn. And uh, but yeah, we don't have any flies on the wall. Everyone's got to be uh, engaged. Applications open up next month. Hey, Ooh. thanks, Val. Yep, Dr. Val. And, uh, and not only that, but sometimes Yo, Nautilus will host um, artists aboard as well. So awesome. Yeah. Fun program. What was that? Oh, will, you, will you repeat that, Amber? Not everybody. Not everybody oh, just that. occasionally uh, Nautilus will collaborate and host an artist aboard as well. Artists. Oh, cool. Yeah, oh, yeah that's awesome. Oh, well, great. That application, maybe, maybe if you uh, just want to want to email communications or, or education at uh, at oet.org, and if you're interested, if or if it's not posted, or you can apply through that science communication fellow uh, website, where I think our or application. Yeah. It'd be great to have artists. We uh, should be acquiring the bottom relatively soon. Almost to that depth, and uh, so we're gonna. Yeah, we're picking up the bottom. 
We're going to start All right. shifting towards operational talk and uh, taking care of taking care of making this nice landing on Ononui Onoiki. And uh, yeah, mahalo for joining us for that blue water adventure. Can Atalanta sonar sweep a little faster? That's the one on the left, right? Nice, perfect. Always excited. <laughs> <laughs> Scan speed, I see. So you gotta you gotta make sure you put the mouse in the right. You know, if you want to control that one, you got to uh -huh. click in that box. Okay. And then you can use Cool. That. Nice. Thank you. Are you okay if I go ahead and switch it to yep. DBL? I think that was that wasn't a good fix though. Oh yeah. We're over yeah. here. Just crossing 2,400 meters, nearing nearing the sea floor. Always an exciting yeah. moment. I'm waiting to see it pop up in the screen. I think this should be good. Less than a hundred feet till bottom. Nice. Beautiful. Sheet flow? I know, I was just thinking, <laughs> all right, Val. <laughs> yeah, my attention was elsewhere for a second, so I'm a uh, yeah. pop quiz. What's yeah. in front of us? <laughs> I don't think that's a sheet flow because I see a little more uh, going on. Cool. Well, we'll uh, dive, cool. we'll jump right into it and let, uh, let operations uh, take care of their business and then we'll Yes, indeed. We'll be exploring with Dr. Val. And everybody else. It's well, not just me. Well, yeah. This looks primarily geo. If it were just me, it would be extremely boring. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I'd probably crash the ROVs. <laughs> <laughs> it would be quite difficult to run all the ROV setup and, and oh do the science. God, no, no. Yeah, no, that takes a village. I, that I takes don't a think crew. It works to have a scientist driving the vehicle. <laughs> 
They get kind of wrapped up in the science. Not the <laughs> sure do. <laughs> oh, look, a rock. <laughs> Dark first. Oh, I guess I have to come back at you to yeah, get. Yeah, I, I was going to tell you. I was going to let you finish that, and I was going to tell you. You have to come back to me. So we go on uh, uh, that Five way is yeah. three one five ish or something. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. All good. All good. Thank you. All right. Go ahead and call in a move now. Yeah. All right. Bridge now. Could we move uh, nine zero meters right. at oh, bearing at three two zero? Thank you. This does seem like pretty interesting. Bathymetry, it almost looks. Yeah, it almost looks like ripple marks, except yeah, lava. I was like, it looks like there's high current, except <laughs> yeah. it's rock. So that's a, that's a difficult one. And actually, it looks like there is a potentially some sediment on top of it from this. I think it is a little sedimented, yeah. Depth, yeah. From this height above the seafloor, it looks. Um, well. Well, we'll get a better view in a minute, but it's interesting. Seemingly so flat compared to what we've seen before in terms of just surface f texture and features. Just yeah, to... yeah, it looks like waypoint yeah. three is on this uh, kind of flatter area in the contours. Nice we'll uh, hit a slope. Stone. Yeah, we'll hit a slope break pretty soon on our way up toward uh, waypoint four. Mm -hmm. It's very platy looking. So is this that hyaloclastite, or is this, uh, uh, what, are we, what are we looking at? Don't know. Hyaloclastite is the yellow stuff, right? Yeah. Nice. All right. All right. Oh, you're still kind of tight, but maybe we're right. Is that sponge rubble? It looks like sponge yeah. rubble. Oh, wow. Mm. For real? That's a lot of sponges. That is a lot of sponges. There's a huge number of sponges. I know Sebastian was talking about seeing a lot of sponge rubble like this. Um, I feel like he, he was, he and his watch were in the more flatter parts of some of the previous sea mounds that we that we dove at. I could be wrong, but um, he did no, mention makes sense. seeing some of them. Yeah. This would be an area where a lot of stuff kind of collects, especially in these little uh, depressions oh. here. Right, that's what we're seeing, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so the currents might have moved those um, the sponge skeletons around, and then because of the depressions here, they would have gotten caught up. Yeah. And then fallen into this and then not moved. Yeah, so not that coral, or nope, not coral, sponge, sponges were growing in such abundance on this tiny little portion of rock. They um, probably just traveled here. They just traveled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. probably for it. That makes a lot of sense. They got stuck in the depression. Interesting.
And right on cue, our good friend and scientist ashore, Asako, is joining us. So happy to have you here as always. Hi, Asako. How's it? Yeah, this looks pretty sheet flowy here, <clears throat> if that is indeed what it is. Oh, cool. So, yeah, I'm just trying to make heads or tails of the uh, the texturing that we're seeing. So it does look like we've got some loose sediment on top of the hard rock substrate. Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> Looks like we might be kicking a little bit of that up too. I know for um for corals, having a lot of moving sediment can be problematic for the polyps. Um, so that, that along with any number of other reasons, could be one of the reasons we're not, not seeing. So it just kind of gums up the works for them? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It looks like it blocks a lot of like nutrient flow within the polyps, or like blocks like their movement uh, or yeah, circulation. Yeah, you know, and it kind of like block, um, it, it it yep, definitely manganese crust under the sediment. Oh, nice. So. Yeah. It can, you know, it can kind of block the polyps from feeding more, um, and it can irritate them, I think, is what I've heard. Like, irritate the, like, living tissue, um, and kind of, kind of, like, get into wedges and such, and, um, yeah. Hey, All right. Nice. Seems to not be hyaloclastite here, so that's always the question when you see an expanse of uh, kind of this yellow black uh, looking uh, 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 coloration across the seabed. Sometimes it is, but uh, yeah, this looks like a fairly well developed uh, botryoidal manganese crust uh, overlying probably uh, some series of lavas. Actually, this pitted surface texture reminds me a lot of the 65-pound uh, lava flow chunk that we picked up in 2017 Ooh, in the in another part of the ocean. You gonna very, go for very a 66-pound chunk this time? No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't want to hold that around on the ship. I, I don't think I could. I would definitely not be able to get through the uh, door to the lab without just just clocking oh, myself gosh. on the door frame. Yeah, no, no one would. We, they would take multiple people to it would. it around. Yeah. I don't know if we have the ballast yeah, for that. Twelve thousand. Oh, I mean, yeah, oh, really? yeah, yeah. yeah it, it reminds me a lot of that cheap oh, when we picked the, up. Oh, not on the not on Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Don't have the ballast on. Uh, it's not that often yeah, that you really need yeah. sixty-five pounds of a single rock. So, yeah, I would imagine. Yeah. No, we we've been doing pretty well on this expedition. So. Oh, it's already on it. Mm-hmm. So the botryoidal texture, does that tell you anything about um, this, the sheet flow in particular? Unfortunately, this not really. Um, uh, no. Just means that it's had time to develop that. Does it, does it speak to how the manganese crust forms? So I'm not sure what um, it was. was it? Yeah, it, it does reflect some of the growth patterns, but I don't really know uh, the nuances of that very well. Cool. But a lot of minerals one. have that botryoidal texture too, and usually stuff that is like precipitating out of water. It's gonna be a Interesting. Fish. fish. Stick? What is, it? What is this? No, it's, no, a it's fish. definitely a fish. Start one? I think it's an ophiodin, a potato head. Oh, we got a potato head. Ah, there it goes. Goodbye. Bye, potato head. 
We have uh, several viewers, maybe more, uh, around the world who are trying to follow along with us. Okay, and uh, Wonderful. our amazing video engineer, Amber, just throwing up the some of the navigational tools that we're using. You can see our, our bath map and where, where we are here. on the dive plan. If you're following along on Google Earth, another viewer asking if this volcano is above sea level at one point, and uh, it's, it's still cold. above sea level, Just actually. Just a tiny little bit of it. Yeah, it's the oh, smallest yeah, of the northwestern Hawaiian islands, um, just gar called Gardner Pinnacles, uh, at, at the summit, near the summit. But uh, right -click massive be beneath the surface. Yeah, yeah you can look it up on um, Google Earth. Yeah, that's yeah, it. super that's cool. Val's yeah. 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 trick. Val's yeah. trick. You look it up on Google yeah. Earth, then you oh, scroll in, okay. and then you keep scrolling in, and then um, there will be this tiny little spot, and you'll zoom in a little bit more, and 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 then you'll see, oh, this is a picture, and you zoom in a little bit more, and that's those are the pinnacles. Yep. And so it's it's unbelievable. I had no idea how how um, large this this you know, this feature really is. Yeah, I saw that jump yep. up real quick. So, and it's entirely possible that uh, much more of the volcano was above sea level at one point in its history, but it's been uh, uh, that that would have been a while ago, you know, ten plus million years ago. But it's it subsided once it moved off of the uh, the Hawaiian hotspot, and uh, it has. Uh, only just left that, that tiny little crest uh, sticking out of the water. 10 million years, just a couple years. Geologically yeah. speaking, that's yeah. not that long ago, yeah. but... Um, During our last Ice Age, Dr. Val, or any of the subsequent I the Ice Ages that preceded our last one, would, would ocean depth uh, have changed significantly this close to the equator? Would, would uh, some of what's now submerged have possibly been above the surface? You know, uh, I would like to say provisionally yes. That has been an active research question that uh, some colleagues have been working on. Oh, cool. So let's, see, let's see what the information Does looks the distance like. from equator change how? I know that there's isostatic and Eurost eurostatic um, change in, in sea level. Um, I think there's some. Um, yeah, last glacial maximum occurred about 20,000 years ago during the last phase of the Pleistocene epoch. And at that time, global sea level was more than 400 feet lower than it is today. Okay. So, yeah, yeah that was pretty profound. Yeah, I think there are some locations on Earth where, ch where you can have localized changes in sea level. But um, when you're talking about, like, um, uh, glaciation at that extent, you'll, you have, that's a... That's a global, um, that creates global changes. All right. the planet's yeah. oceans are going yes. to be. You know, there are all sorts yeah. of questions about, like, you know, where those glaciers may have been and, like, what the timing was when once they started uh, melting and formed a meltwater pulse, you know, how that sort of uh, works its way around the uh, the oceans, too. Yeah. And, yeah, that, that, uh, uh, that lowering of uh, uh, sea level during the last glacial maximum would have uh, promoted uh, coral growth at certain terraces too. And uh, right. yeah, so those those are uh, places uh, that are being studied by by some researchers. So what's now the large kind of shallow reef uh, surrounding the Gardner Pinnacles may have been actually above the surface, and and tr shallow tropical reef might have been uh, flourishing in. Uh, waters that are now probably too deep for those corals to... Yeah, uh, seems to yeah. be the case. Another really good example of this is uh, Penguin Bank, just off of Molokai. That's right. So about 120 meters down, you uh, get those shallow uh, coral skeletons. Is there a mesophotic reef there, too? Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. Like, you mean an active reef right now? Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't or know. Just, or mesophotic corals. Um, I know we sampled some, but they were placed to see. I, I, we didn't see any that were alive at that depth, but okay. um, yeah, we can uh, see if anybody's looked into that. We do have viewers tuning in from around the world, and we appreciate you being here. Um, you might also have noticed that Nautilus is showing up in the news, uh, whether it's our uh, humbling dives on uh, those shipwrecks, the aircraft carrier wrecks from the Battle of Midway, or a recent Dumbo Octopus or several Dumbo octopus that we actually encountered on some of our seamount dives. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're getting out there in the media, so we hope you guys have been tuning in, enjoying learning about our project, about this really amazing expedition uh, and this awesome team. You can find out about not just the amazing people that I like to celebrate and, and call the greatest watch 
uh, the world has ever known from 8 to 12, <laughs> uh, bringing you the deep sea live and fresh. Can we get a zoom? But, oh, yeah, uh, thank you. But also the other watches, all the crew members, all the corps, corps of exploration uh, engaged in oh, this. Oh, this is interesting. Oh, Black Wait, this coral. is not what I initially thought it was. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a... Yeah, that maybe a metallic like a gorgia or something. Tall. It looks like that, but it's not. Sneaky. It's it's very sneaky. Yeah. Yeah, coral. it's got the pairs. So it looks like, yes, there is a mesophotic reef of some sort on Penguin Bank. So oh, called it. Very cool. Nice job. I don't know anything about it, but yes. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. And this coral, yeah, this is looking like a black coral to me. It's uh, the branching pattern looks similar to some of the corals that we've seen earlier on this cruise, but um, I personally have not seen one this tall. Is this um, is this full zoom? Yeah, it is. I only know okay, bathopathies. It's the only one I remember. That's pretty much what I know too. Barnacles <laughs> on it too, though yeah. I think. Do you want to go closer, Virginia? Robert's asking. Um, that would probably be nice. Yes. Yeah. Let's we've do got that. those barnacles, and then also this is this is that is exceptionally tall. Um. Oh. I like tall things. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> I like short things too. <laughs> Medium-sized things. <laughs> also, like all things. <laughs> Fun size. <laughs> yeah. So it looks like mesophotic uh, corals are actually underdocumented in the Pacific. So yes. you just stumbled into potential research question there. Oh, I've had a research question there for a minute. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But I, 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 I mean, corrected. I don't, I don't have um, any means to actually do said research. Gotcha. Lesai. Oh wow! What is zoom? And a shrimp. Oh. <laughs> awesome. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's really interesting. Maybe this is just a tall bath of pathies. Oh, or is it slightly alternate? No, I can't tell. Do we have anyone in the uh, science chat tuning in? Or oh, yeah, there's an alternate. absolutely tiny offset yeah. on those branches, but um, I'm not, you know, I'm not certain that I've looked at a bathopathy as exactly to see just how um, mm. alternate it is, but it does look like we have a, a tall alternate alternopathies in our ID guide, um, but yeah. Oh, that That's one has fantastic. a long stem. Mm -hmm. Long Not stock. quite as long as, as the one that we're looking at, but yeah, this is awesome. And it does seem to have a couple barnacles on it as well. Mm -hmm. um, it is really interesting. That's fantastic. Yeah, and I think it's also really interesting because we have not seen one like it yet, to my knowledge. So awesome. Thank you so much for that um, amazing Zoom. And Lalo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure the mic's picked up that wave. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like when I drop something in the house. <laughs> what are you dropping? Rocks? Occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> that checks out. <laughs> it better. <laughs> Robert and Amber, uh, some folks are interested if we've ever taken a black light or other fluorescing light down just to see what uh, what we what we see with uh, with the ROVs giving out giving out those kinds of light. Has that ever been done? Um, I think that well, uh, I don't know about UV light. We have done an experiment where they had a uh, a super sensitive instrument called a what was that Opus. That was many years ago, but it was looking for light that was generated at the hydrothermal vents. Oh wow, that's but interesting. Yeah, in general, you know, uh, 
red light gets very attenuated quickly, mm -hmm. and green tends to have the, the least amount. That's why we use the green lasers instead of red lasers. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. And then uh, well, last oh, year we did we did go in with red lights to look at shrimp on a hydrothermal vent with Alvin. <laughs> that was to see if the shrimp are disturbed by the light from the submarine. Yeah. Do you remember what you found? Do they did they uh, seem to behave the differently? They didn't the red seem to be yeah. affected yeah. by the lights at all. Right. Yeah, we came in with just and the one very dim red mm -hmm. LED. Oh. Just enough to see what we we're doing, and uh, and then they sampled. The sh we sampled the shrimp with RNA later to like kind of freeze them in time. Wow! And then uh, turned the lights on and observed them, and they didn't they didn't flinch at all. They made no hmm. no, no change, change in at their all. Behavior. Yeah. Wow! Interesting. And then uh, sampled them with the lights on, and and again with the RNA later. But I didn't I don't know the outcome of the experiment, but I know that there was some some uh, British scientists that had had written a paper and saying that the shrimp were affected, so there's some debate there. Good. So I don't I don't know the mm. the deal with all that, but yeah. Oh thank you. So felt what would make this rock like, is this weathering that we're seeing? I was afraid you were going to ask that, or and I'm not thing. totally <laughs> sure what we're seeing uh, right now. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's Volcano okay. No stumped valve. I love it. Yeah, Good job, some, Volcano. There's like some a bunch of lava morphology it, that you know? <laughs> it's like so yeah, strange. That's, prob that's probably uh, gas escape routes, but uh, no, I, I can't quite tell what's going on with uh, why it's breaking where it is. You know this like um, so. this layered breaking like this that uh, with all the holes in it actually reminds me of Curacao. I don't know if you encountered these kinds of textures when you were um, there. The microcarst topography yeah. in one part of the island on yeah. that limestone part. Kind of. I mean, it just looks similar. I don't know it if does, it has anything yeah. to do with the origin. Uh, um, but, yeah. I think this is basalt, but that could just be places where um, like gas was escaping, or yeah. there's some other sort of <clears throat> like local morphology that's affecting the uh, growth of the manganese crust somehow. Okay. Hard to say. I, I'm just as curious as you are. Because I, I don't see much uh, evidence of uh, like like rubble piled up nearby either. Yeah, doesn't seem like it's things are falling apart. It's yeah. Just, uh, just got these holes. Yeah, can we get a zoom on that? Cuts. Or yeah. actually, if I um, can catch oh. it, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Them. It's a squat, and it's gone. <laughs> bye, squat. Bye, bye. Squat lobs are going to squat. You can kind of see it in the Atlanta camera. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> and there's something black right there. Floating. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh. Ah, oh, that black coral we saw is getting sent over to someone for uh, an ID. So. Good. Yeah. Ah, okay. Um, says it's still bathypathies. Oh, nice. Can we zoom in? Thanks, Asako. It's, it's just tall. And Tina. This is like the kind of galaxy you see around the vents. So. Yeah, it does look a lot like those, doesn't but it? But is uh, it fuzzy? <laughs> no. <laughs> it is a bigger squat lobster, though. Yeah, it's a yeah, edible. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the jumbo shrimp we saw. <laughs> oh, gosh. oh my gosh, that thing was crazy. The, the monstrous shrimp. Yes. Yeah. I Literally love that that's part of its Latin name. name. Yeah. <laughs> Monstrous, Wow, yeah. that is a beautiful crab. Squat lobster. I'm going to highlight this one. Crustacean. That's awesome. Has a little space. Yes, and it I can attest it is not fuzzy. So. And it fits, it fits that space, and it's calling it home. Mm -hmm. Looks pretty cozy. Yeah. Mm. These are often the first animals you see when you're approaching the vents. You can kind of zero in on the vents by looking at how many of these there are. Oh, I would True, imagine. yeah. And yeah. we've got Very some cool. kind of trace there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's just a part of the rock that has increased sediment mm -hmm. or if that is an actual. It looks kind of animal like to me. Mm -hmm. The only thing is that there's more sediment. Can we zoom in again? In the middle. Oh, well, could be poo. 
Could be a crack. <laughs> Don't know. Oh, Perhaps. It does look animal made. <laughs> we did see our sea cuke. Ooh. That is very true. Oh, it in. might it might have a bit of a raise. That might be animal. It might yeah, be that an animal followed the path of the. It could be. Yeah, because that looks very um circular in cross section. It's a nice way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> Nice little thread. Yeah. Sour straw. <laughs> mm. Candy snacks I should have bought before I got on the ship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it sounds like my mom is going to be trying some of those armadillo eggs tomorrow, and I have a feeling that I may be uh, trying them when I get back to her house. <laughs> yes, uh. So. Yeah, that was a good suggestion. Some viewers want to know if the crab's white from lack of light, like it just hasn't been getting any sun recently. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it has not been getting any sun, <laughs> and I don't think we have a better reason um, for why it's white. Um, but actually, um, you know, it's uh, it's not uncommon for, for crabs to be pale like that. Um, and I think it's a larger trait of that, um, that group, so... Um, but yeah, no, I, I mean, the coloration of these organisms is something that I think a lot of researchers are still kind of guessing at. Um, there are some groups of researchers who are looking into the specific coloration and um, as well as like evolutionary changes and um, how that all has is correlated and how that's moved on, you know, between different organisms, etc., cetera, et cetera. But it is not something that I am familiar with. I mean, having and maintaining color in most instances for any animal anywhere seems like it's going to have some energetic cost. Yeah, like you're mm -hmm. going to have to. Oh, yeah, there's another poo. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> there's more poo. Um, it could have costs. Uh, I think it, it kind of depends on. Yeah. If it doesn't need yeah, the color, then it probably won't. And according to my hypothesis, it probably wouldn't have evolved to have it unless it's serving some function. Yeah. But it makes it tricky. I would say I think there there could be any number of reasons to have color in the deep sea, mm -hmm. um, and there could be a reason to be white. I'm just not familiar with it. Yeah. That's fair. Me either. Oh, I gotta hurry up. Yep. But it's not because it, it forgot to go tanning. <laughs> yeah. No. It probably. It likes it. Yeah. Down. Oh, hello. Yeah. All good. Yeah, so we're we're on the slope break now, and uh, that's why we're seeing a little bit of rubble there. But it all looks pretty uh, pretty stuck. Yeah, we are heading up a fairly steep slope. Mm -hmm. Heading up to waypoint four. Oh wow! This looks like uh, more of a some rubble. Rubble, yeah. Oh, and more rubble, more rocks. Are you noticing? Are you thinking rock sometime? Sometime, yeah, but I don't think we'll be able to sample here. Looking yeah. at uh, looks crusty. Everything, yeah, it's kind of crusty. I was going to ask if this looks to be kind of similar amounts, uh, type of manganese and crustacean that we've seen on the other sea mounts, or because this volcano may be younger than many of the ones we've been looking at. Uh, I think, I mean, based it, on where we are. It does look pretty crusty. I, so pretty crusty. Not quite what I was expecting, but then again, I don't know about Ooh. the growth episode. Ooh. Uh, stars? Uh, growth yeah, episodes yeah, of the stuff. Yeah, looks like one of those sea stars. Yeah. Hey, uh, Slime is star? Yeah. Looks like yeah. it, yeah. A juicy unit. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Dan. My name's Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no. Uh. <laughs> Eleven fifteen folks, only forty five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Just bear with us. Oh. That is a beautiful color on that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I kinda awesome. come in with Thanks no expectations about some of the field sites we look at as far as like you know manganese crustal growth or whatever because the more the more That's rocks awesome. thanks for that zoom we can uh, the more can rocks that i've looked at after cutting them open over the years since you know that first expedition uh 
Uh, the more it's apparent that there are like distinctive growth bands that you can see in the thicker manganese crust, which tells me it's not a constant process. And uh, I, I don't quite know how to translate that yet. And I have a couple ideas on like how that could be done, but I also know we have a uh, manganese crust group at USGS doing their thing and I don't want to step on their toes. So, uh, Yeah. Well, loving this uh, rubble field, very different than the flatter kind of layered lava field we were looking at down below. Different in texture at least. Yeah, very different. I do like rubble. I like it a little more when I can pick it up. <laughs> yeah, this is it is pretty obvious here, or maybe it is the sedimentation, but it it does seem pretty obvious that yeah. it's all connected. Yeah. yeah. So we'll we'll let it we'll let it be. What could potentially like mm. make a rubble field like this? Um, this is potentially a pillow basalt sequence that we're seeing here. Um, that's been some some of the flows look truncated. Some of them look like they've broken off. So this is a. Uh, uh, yeah, just part of the volcanic stack. And uh, when you pile pillow basalts on top of each other like this, you can get these very kind of jumbly looking uh, uh, piles and uh, you know, just stacks of lava flows. And uh, you know, they, they can stay like this for a very long time, especially once they start getting crusted over. This is just oh. keeping on going. Oh. Wow. Yep. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there it is. Hey how tall do um can we zoom in yeah it, w it would be pretty good to get a, a bit of a zoom um wow it'd be really interesting too after oh the polyps are uh, they're not gonna make it easy for you are they yeah that's okay it's I very mean, it's much a, alive it's an unbranched bamboo so that's where we're at um wow the nodes are so close together on those unbranched bamboos, and I stack right one on top of the other. Wow, those polyps are. That's kind of interesting. This looks like it might almost be as tall as Herc, if not taller. Uh, I I think it could potentially be taller. Yeah. Uh, how how tall do you uh, do you think it is? Oh. Hey, it's, we're on a slope, so it's going to be hard because uh, the altitude we're going to read is going to be from the stern. Mm -hmm. Right. So. Oh, well. It is pretty cool. I'm guessing in the range of like three meters, maybe. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's taller than Herc. Excellent. It's taller than you, Dan. I mean, it's not straight up and down either. So it's got right. A bow yeah. Edge. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, awesome. Thank you. And uh, and uh, yeah. Well, that'll be maybe the tallest one we've seen this trip. Perhaps. Yeah. You can dig it. I'll add it to my list of cool things we've seen. Dr. Val, is this manganese encrustation only noticeable on hard substrate? Or is this something that's happening in the sort of uh, pelagic sedimentation zone, but it's just getting buried within the sediment and kind of mixed in as it as it deposits on the abyssal plain or on the seafloor? Um, so I don't know as much about uh, abyssal plain geology. Mm -hmm. um, just uh, Partly lack of really looking at much of it, and partly just not having had a, a reason to look it up until now. Um, but yeah, the, seeing manganese crusts uh, like this is is pretty common, uh, particularly once you get into older seamounts. I've actually seen some very um, early manganese crust uh, formation. Yeah, right there. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, some really early f formation uh, uh, manganese crust forming on. Uh, uh, some very recently erupted rocks, um, which caught me by surprise. So yeah, it's kind of, if it gets a chance to deposit on something, seems like it will. Manganese on 
pistol planes. Let's see if that gives us anything. Ah, there we go. Um, yeah, you can get manganese nodules uh, on abyssal planes, so they're they're kind of nucleating on something okay, cool. or uh, uh, down at those depths, but they they don't necessarily uh, distribute. That manganese doesn't distribute itself among the sediments. So, so you said because yeah, with our uh, shipwreck dives, we we did see uh, what that um, what that is abyssal cool sediment there? looked like, and it is uh, lighter in color. Yeah. So yeah. 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 Thank you. Oh, you can awesome. see his arms. It's feeding arms. Oh, yeah, right in here. Oh, it's mouth. Doesn't it have the arms coming out through its mouth, too? The tentacles? Oh, I guess technically, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. What do you think, Kukui? Uh, what, yeah, what, what do you think, Kukui? About? Is it a, do you think it's a synalactid, oh, or? Yeah, I, that's the first impression I got, too. Awesome. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, great. Thanks for the Thank zoom. Do we have an estimate, Dr. Val, of how long this volcano, where we are at in the chain now, has been extinct? Is it, uh, are we getting closer to like the 10 to 15 million range? Or are we getting down into the 5 to 10 million years ago range? I know we're, we're still 500 miles away from Oahu, so, you know. Um, what's, what's known of its eruptive history is, uh, places its age about, or its age of activity about 12.5 to 14.1 million years ago. Oh, perfect. Um, that's that's not necessarily the total bounds, but that's the uh, the age range that uh, we are aware of uh, from material we've been able to study. Great. Thank so you. it's possible it could be a little bit older if uh, you could uh, get into uh, uh, you know deep into the bowels of the volcano and look at the um, uh, the pre shield phase, but that's going to be yeah. basically inaccessible. Yep, we we do not condone uh, drilling within uh, uh, Papa Hanau So oh, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Oh, another one. Yeah. Zoom in. Uh, I think that's our source of poo. <laughs> <laughs> we have I'm sure found one the of many. <laughs> this one looks. Oh, yeah. Looks bubbly. Yeah. Mm. I still want to say synalactic because of the appendages that are poking out of it, mm -hmm. but that's just me. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have feet. Yeah. So this is, is different than the other one, right? It is. Yeah. It is different, but also similar. Same, same, but different. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's part of the large, same larger group, but I would have, I, I imagine these are different species. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. We can move on. A very cool little path we're traveling mm -hmm. we're deep sea traveling i like it already making good progress up to waypoint oh, four yeah you wanna uh, is that a skeleton can we zoom in oh no that looks alive it does look alive and oh. yep, we got what a nice couple associates on it. Yeah, I'm not positive. Is it another black coal? Um, um, this is looking a bit more doesn't like look a like it. Well, I'll, yeah, it does not look like a black coal to me. I could be wrong. All right, we can't hang out here. We okay. gotta get going. No worries. Thanks, though. Come on up. Mm -hmm. I got some pictures with the Ooh. still cam. Nice work. Yeah, thanks. I try hard. Um, <laughs> and uh, the polyps are um, the branching 
is, I mean, it looks like a Chrysogorgia. Um, the pops um, remind me of a Chrysogorgia. And then also the branches are um, straight off of the secondary branches and um, the polyps seem to only be on one side and it's pretty planar um, so very excited very cool what's that bulbous thing that was on it is that another anemone i think so it might have been might it's have been. hard to tell because it was all retracted I can check my pictures, see what I have. Yeah, there was uh, at least, there were, I think, two anemones and a barnacle on that um, rice of orchard. Just a quick pilot swamp. This is interesting. So we, um, where we got down, where we dropped down on was a bit of a, like a, a stair, kind of a, a terrace formation. Um, mm -hmm. And so now we're just kind of heading up slope up to the next little stair um, on waypoint four. Um, that's pretty interesting. I mean, I think we were thinking that it wouldn't have been quite this, uh, would have been uh, less sedimented. Yeah, it's a bottle brush form. Oh, yeah. yeah, could we, would it be possible to get a, oh, sorry, what were you pointing out? I was going to say there's another one right there, too. Yeah, would it be possible to get a zoom at either of those corals? Okay. Um, Rub it real quick. We're going to start seeing more of this uh, once we get up toward the uh, the next terrace. We're starting to see where uh, uh, some of these uh, corals are uh, uh, Can we get on? calling this uh, slightly jutting out substrate home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. Amber, can I get zoom? Uh, uh, yeah. Well, that previous sure Okeanos we'll dive uh, found a lot in this area, but we're starting deeper than what yeah. their dive did. Yeah, they were saying that they started at um, much shallower than this. So. Yeah. You got a real quick view. Awesome. Yeah, we can't Thanks. hang around. Yeah. That's all good. That's okay. Thank you. Um, okay. You're good. Thanks, though. Uh -huh. All right, I'm coming. Yeah. Here. Can we do a flyby zoom um, of this coral? Um. Or is this a different direction than you're it's a traveling? Different direction. Okay, kinda. that's okay. fine. Thanks, though. Uh -huh. <clears throat> a little eel coming up to us on the side. Oh, uh, yeah. 
I see him right there. Yeah, so we have quite a bit of heave, and we're on a very steep wall here, so, yeah. Gotcha. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, yeah, so that makes we sense. can't really... And the heave is pretty bad, too. Yeah, it does look like we've got another Christ Porsche there. Uh, yeah, 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 kind of up this way, so, yeah. yeah. Did I just see it? Sorry? Oh, a bunch of stuff. I don't know what rock. I just saw. There's a bunch of stuff right there. I don't know what the... Yeah. I saw that too. It's like a tumbling snail or something? Oh. oh I missed it. Is it right in front of us, or...? Something it right was, there. but white. you're gonna wanna have to let it go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm <clears throat> not asking for any zooms or anything. It's just like, what did I just see there? Yeah. We'll catch some up here. Yeah, I think you need to get out in front. Cause, uh... I need to get out from underneath you? You need to get out in front. You okay. need to be out in front instead of okay. you're trailing behind. Yep. I'm coming, I'm coming. I'm hold that a little bit more. It should flatten out a little bit up here. Catalina, I know you're coming back out in uh, just a couple months' time to do a mapping cruise. Are you looking forward to that? Or are you going to miss the sitting in the navigator's chair? What's the uh, what's your yeah. feelings about that? Um, I mean, I'm looking forward to it for sure. I think it's yeah, I'll definitely miss this uh, this aspect of it. I've been on yeah, most of the cruises I've been on recently have been just mapping, and this adds just a whole new layer and makes it a lot more dynamic and exciting. So. It's just a short one coming up, so, yeah. yeah. Fun. Well, you're awesome at this, too. We've enjoyed having you in the navigator seat. Thank you, Dan. Yes, most definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Val just wants to poke one of those rocks just to see. I no, go? I know they're all stuck. <laughs> <laughs> Don't need to poke them to see that. <laughs> well, we are coming up on what looks to be kind of sort of a flat feature. Not very, not very wide, but yeah, we should be turning the corner on that pretty soon. Just a little ledge in this, in this steep hillside. This thing is so annoying. Oh, how it just runs away. Oh, I hate it.
Robert and Zach, I, I may have to do a ROV pilot impersonation for an early morning ship to shore, unless one of you wants to get up at five. <laughs> um, what, what would your, uh, well, I, I knew that was going to be your response to that, but uh, what would be your advice if I'm, if I'm on there and they want to know about ROV piloting, what's, what's like one thing I should definitely tell them? Camera can get zoom. Uh, it, it means if you're going to make a career out of it, you're going to spend an awful lot of your time at sea. Like, so be ready to s hang out at sea. Be ready to be in demand. <laughs> in demand. Yeah. At sea. At sea. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be all the things. Well, I mean, at sea. Half, half the year, at least. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. So it's, yeah, it's a seagoing career, you know. Do you think the, you think we'll get to a point where, where people are controlling some of these uh, deep sea ROVs from, from shore? Is that in the future? So what, what has been the issue is that there's, um, there's too much delay, right? Yeah, right. If you're doing it via satellite, but like, you know, that's something that Starlink is that? sort of addressed by having the lower orbits. Yep. It has less... Uh, Reducing that latency time. Yeah. The, yeah. So I think it is possible if you were using Starlink to remotely control it. But like I said before, the most important thing about being an ROV is keeping the vehicles running. It's <laughs> not <laughs> driving Very them. Very much so. so. You, you got <laughs> to be at sea to fix them if they break at sea. Yeah. yeah that's right. You got to launch them. You got to recover them. So... So yeah, you can re operate them remotely, but you can't fix them remotely. Yeah, I don't think we have <laughs> ROV technology for repairing <laughs> ROVs. No but ROV re repair robots yet? Right, yeah. I've heard some of the commercial companies wanted to do that too, and what their plan is that they are gonna have like a dedicated playa, and that's their just, their deal. They go out wherever their patrol van's at, whether it be at the office or whatever, and then they just have engineers on the boat. Okay. Recovering and doing whatever, and uh, launching, recovering. What else could I tell the kids that'll make me look really smart as an ROV, as a pretend ROV pilot? What could I, what could I say? <laughs> What's like a code word that only ROV pilots know and code use? Code word. <laughs> ground fault. <laughs> ground, <laughs> ground fault. <laughs> ground fault. Yeah. We got a DC yeah. ground fault. The Delta. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, ground faults are definitely the, the the most frequent problem. Do you want to talk about what was going on with Herc early in the dive when we sorry, had? I'm having an episode, so I don't. Oh, sorry, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I remember Robert talking about when uh, becoming a pilot is specializing. So some people specialize in software, some will specialize in electronics like he has. Um, some are like hydraulics or mechanics. And so there's, if you could specialize in addition to having kind of that well-rounded um, yeah. understanding of how, how it all works together. Oh, I like that. That's great insight. I love our little video we can show on Ship to Shore where Herc just comes apart into all of its pieces yeah. and you can see all the different components of the mm -hmm. system that make up the ROV. and. Uh, it's always a, yeah. it's always a fun video to show. Yeah, that's definitely the video that I've showed every ship to shore that I <laughs> yeah. participated in yeah. and hosted. And kids, I mean students, no matter what age, even some of the adults, the instructors, the educators, they're just mind blown by yeah. seeing that video. So it definitely illustrates all of the moving pieces that one of these RV require. Yeah goes well with that sort of specialization mm -hmm. concept as well. All right, I think I'm ready. Ready to put on a show. <laughs> Do I need a cool hat or something? ROV pilot's hat? Some little pin? Here's my aviators. Oh, where are my aviators? Yeah, there you go. I'll put that my aviators cool. on, okay. Get some wings. <laughs> or at least a uh, uh, double octopus fins. <laughs> What is the school group tomorrow? Oh, it's school from Florida. Okay. Uh, St. John's Country Day, I think. Uh, looking forward, if you're, if you're up early in the morning already, getting ready for school and 
maybe tuning in. What time? It would be uh, 5.30 in the morning. I'm sorry if you're awake. Your school needs to have later start time. <laughs> but uh, if you're already yes. awake, maybe going in for practice or something like that, said, oh, yeah, we're having a conversation with the Nautilus today. I might be talking to you in the morning pretending to be an ROV pilot. So, uh, <laughs> Immediately, <laughs> yeah, whenever I start going up and I see it do, I just click the other way. Some of our fans noticed Little Herc out on deck. We're wondering why. Initially, we were uh, we were hoping to have. We don't want to make Robert more upset than he already <laughs> is right now, but. Um, Robert, uh, just trying to breathe. We, uh, we love Robert. He's got some sinus sinus action going on. So send Robert your aloha. Mm -hmm. Help him heal up. But uh, yeah, really, uh, we're really excited about taking little Hercules down incredibly deep to see the shipwrecks from the Battle of Midway, World War II. Oh, and yeah. we, did, we did do some incredible dives there, but... Uh, Crinoid? Ah. Had to do them with Atalanta only. Yes. It is a crinoid. I only saw it? one of the branches originally. Very oh. cool. Do you want to take a look at it? Um, no, this is okay. <laughs> we, we can keep going. <laughs> I know, I know the, 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 the steepness, etc. We've reached our crinoid quota for tonight. Oh, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. What is this? It looks like a whole it, fast. Yeah, it looks there. like... Hold fast? It's like a hold fast. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. This is a coral. Is it still a coral? Or is it a skeleton? Oh, it's part yeah. of a coral. Barely. Aww. I think it's um, mostly dead or eaten bamboo. Where's the sea star that did this? Patrick. Wasn't <laughs> 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 me. <laughs> Patrick. <laughs> I don't even like, I don't even like, uh, Coral Spongebob. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's just impressive. That one sounded a little bit more like Mickey Mouse, I'm not going to lie. It did. <laughs> it did. So, uh, let me ask you all a question. So, that episode where they go back to, or Sparta Girls back in time, <laughs> as a prehistoric, <laughs> and Spongebob and Patrick are all cavemen, and oh, then no. he shows them the fire. When they're eating the corals, don't they look good to eat? <laughs> Classic. Oh man. It's like kind of far away. Okay. I'm um, going away from you. Okay. Let me get back to you then. I'm like that with the Studio Ghibli movies too. Whenever they're making food. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh yeah, Studio Ghibli and their food animations. Mm -hmm. yes. Oh my gosh, they they all look so good. Hayao Miyazaki. Yes. Amazing. It's a great mm -hmm. storyteller. Mm -hmm. His last one is supposed to be coming to America in January, I think. Yeah, that's right. Just this last hour, we've gained uh, just over, or just around 100 meters. And uh, elevation, moving from waypoint three to waypoint four. And we're coming up on just the last 15 minutes of our second to last watch. Yep. Second to last greatest watch of all Aww. time. The world's gonna miss you all. We'll be back though, mm -hmm. we'll be back. Yes, sir. I do like that idea of a cookbook. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, we have so many projects we got to work on. Yeah, too many. <laughs> and we've uh, and we got to put in. I I saw uh, Daniel Wagner, co-expedition lead, put out the call for uh, science input yeah. uh, for next, next year's, year's expedition. So uh, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. we got to scheme up something. Mm -hmm. What do we want to do? A podcast and a recipe. Podcast. <laughs> yeah, you got any uh, volcanoes you want to go visit? Oh, always. Um. <laughs> Should be pretty active over in the Western Pacific. Should, you know, got to have something going on over there. Uh, 
some fun lines to follow to, to follow oh, around. There's so many seamounts out there that need to be looked at. A lot of them uh, Cretaceous. Well, I now know the word hyaloclastite. And uh, what else? So you're basically a geologist. That's about it. Yeah, yeah, but, you got uh, it. But yeah. I'm happy to come in the control van again. <laughs> and uh, it would be awesome. Mm -hmm. That was my favorite because Virginia was very confused by how two out of the three forms of fundamental rock types that she understood to be distinct were somehow mixing. I, yes. was told, I was told there were three types, and apparently I was wrong. I have been told wrong. It's been a lie. Just uh, wait till I tell you about migmatites. Oh, jeez. No, I don't. Oh, I do almost it. don't want to know. I do actually want to know. But I almost don't want to know, because I, it, I can only handle so many types of rocks. So, apparently. <laughs> Yeah, uh, migmatites kind of get really close to the boundary between uh, high-grade metamorphic rocks and igneous rocks. Oh, oh, tell us I'm not more. Not sure I understand. What is it called? Migmatite. Tell us more. Uh, migmatite. Migmatite. How are metamorphic rocks formed again? Uh, those are rocks that have been transformed from one rock type into another uh, due to application of heat and/or oh, pressure. Heat and pressure. Yeah, that's right. And/or things like seawater alteration. So oh. technically. Uh, all of the basalts and stuff that I've been handling uh, in the lab downstairs, uh, those have all been altered by seawater, so technically they're metamorphic too. Oh. We just don't tend to think of it that way. Mm. But they have been altered by time and other processes. Igneous, metamorphic, sedimentary. It's all a spectrum. Uh, three, yeah. two, zero. And for the most part, you know, a lot of rocks do... Uh, uh, been fairly well, but um, it's it's not uncommon either to have things kind of uh, fall into that gray area. I do like gray areas. You can learn a lot in gray areas. Oh yeah, you can. It's it's wonderful. Most of the best lessons probably come for those spaces at the edge, in between. Yep. We will not be seeing any migmatites today, though. <laughs> well, you don't know that. Well, actually, you probably actually do. I do. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I don't know, we could. It could be cool. And then I was like, oh wait, actually, you you can't actually predict where you see some of these things, can't you? Yeah, migmatites you're more likely to find in like uh, uh, continental settings where you have like a uh, heavily metamorphosed nice, something like that. Mm. I'm just gonna nod my head. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was trying to be like, oh, well, you don't know that. We could see this. And then I was like, wait, actually, that's that's not how that works. <laughs> Commonly within Precambrian cratonic blocks. So, yeah, you're going to find that in, like, the interior. <gasps> oh, wait. Oh, no, wait. Oh, number eight. Oh, jumbo. No. oh my God. Number no, it's a little not. ghost Casper octopus. Can we pause the ship for a second? Oh, yeah. highlights. Oh, my What do you guys gosh. want me to call it? Ghosty? Ghosty? Okay. Casper. Ghosty. Uh. Are we? Oh, oh my gosh. Oh. I don't want to get too, too close on the scare them all. Yeah, yeah, Can you yeah. get the laser lights off now? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. He's Thanks. coming to us. Come closer. Oh. Can you zoom? Amber? Yes, Going for a little walk there. He's actually coming towards oh. us. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Oh, he's beautiful. Oh, so yeah. This is the first one we've seen oh, of the cat, right? Yeah. 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 This, oh, wow. this crew. Oh, beautiful. yeah. Just for the 8 to 12s coming at you <laughs> live my first time with Casper. Yeah. Yeah. From the so deep, baby. Cool. Gorgeous. So beautiful. Look at its brain. We love you, Connor Law. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Nice spot. My bad. Giant nerve knot. Wow. Oh my it's goodness. Gorgeous. Oh my goodness. What? It's trying to figure us out too. <laughs> He's yeah. like, what is this? <laughs> Hello friend. Hi bud. You know the footage of the um of the whale fall off of Monterey? Oh yeah. Is that covered in these Casper octopus or is that a different deep sea species? Different, those that was are a, different. I think that was a different one. This is this is much smaller than those, I think. So tiny, huh? The back tentacle, is it missing? In the back side? Maybe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The very after. Uh, uh, I don't know. It might have just wrapped around something. I'm not positive. 
I was watching it earlier. And What's crazy, you can tell his eyes are actually looking at the ROV. <laughs> It's hugging I mean, the sponge. The oh. octopus will often lose a tentacle to predation, and then it'll oh. regrow. Wow. Yeah, it happens. That's crazy. So wow. cool. So this is about 10 centimeters across, I think. I think it was just smaller than the... Beautiful. And the, the two yeah, laser lights large. are about that same, same size. These you are, are awesome, cool. little buddy. Yeah, and I think that might be pretty full grown. I'm I'm pretty sure that these are these are some small. Wow. Oh my god, it's so cute. Look how long its little hood is too. Just yeah. Is it pulling? No. It just crawls along. I think it wants to come with us. Oh, sorry, buddy, but along. you gotta stay. Wow. Great spot, team. Gorgeous. Mahalo, Amber. Mahalo, pilots, front row. Yeah, mahalo, you guys. This, this is, is amazing. <laughs> oh my god. Are getting pretty far? <laughs> We're okay. We're okay. <laughs> I know, I'm looking at it right now. All right. <laughs> oh, it's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like he's waving at us. Dancing and I come in and freak out, but... Wow. How far you are? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much what he's going to say. <laughs> be like octopus. Priorities. Exactly. Oh. I mean, if we could come back a little bit, that would help. Okay. If I move, he's probably going to take it. I can I can pull the, the boat. Ship. Yeah, I can pull back. I don't know. I don't know how long you can look at it. I mean, we've we've gotten a yeah, really great look. Good. This yeah. has been pretty awesome. Okay. I, he, this octopus might want to be. Uh, yeah, he's coming closer. I don't want him getting too too close. Yeah. 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 So, can you Sorry, Amber? Buddy. Yep, coming wide. That was awesome, y'all. What a gift. Totally. Yeah, it truly was. Oh, it's so oh, tiny. So tiny. Oh. Exactly. It's oh. so small. Yeah, it would be better if we get set up so that we're turning over to watch it. Uh, you know, yeah. Proper setup here. <laughs> Good call. Good call, Robert. Ooh, look at it. <laughs> oh. Bye, friend. <laughs> that is so cute. Oh, my gosh. Let me hold butt to you. BRB just dying from adorableness back here. Look, <laughs> yeah. monstrous shrimp. <laughs> oh, it doesn't look quite shrimp. as monstrous, but it is big. It's still pretty big. Yeah. It's as big as that octopus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Race. Oh. Race. Put the pedal to the metal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Beat speed. Skirt, skirt. <laughs> What did you say? <laughs> skirt, skirt. Don't no, say skirt, skirt. skirt. <laughs> you know, like from Fast and Furious or from those what? other race car movies? You got it, Kukui. <laughs> okay. What is this? Ooh. Is that bell? It is a log of rock. A log of rock? It is a long rock. It's a long wow. rock. Pro probably a pillow fragment or something. Oh, we got another cucumber on it, too, or next to it. A whole bunch of sponge debris. Or just a slab of something that broke off of something. Very cool. Mm. Oh, can we get the laser lights back on? Yes. I got it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Viewers from home also offering their mahalo, mahalo to Kanaloa. What a wonderful treat that Casper Octopus was. And a great way to send us into, from this dream, into our uh, hopefully actual <gasps> dreams. Oh, I thought that was a double oh. octopus, sorry. Uh. <laughs> so, no way. Oh, man, we're, I can't believe We are primed and ready. We are so, yeah. it's a, is that a potato head? What is that? Yeah. That is a potato head. Yeah, oh, it does look big. like one of those um, O-fitteds that we've been calling potato head. <laughs>
with love. Yeah. Do we want to look at her or no? Uh, are we I moving? Mean, how no, are we're not moving. We are going to do the watch handover yeah, pretty soon, yeah, so yeah. just make sure we're in the best uh, yeah, position for, for that group. All right, cool. Let me pump my butt here for a second. Though. Welcome in Hans into the into the house, into the holly. Jaina too, the next 12 to fours, the 12 to fours you guys love so much, they're, they're here. Oh, oh goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right, video watch change. Thank you. This is uh, Daniel Kinzer. Moved. Got one watch left. Eight to twelve. Signing off. Aloha. All right. Mahalo thanks nui. So Ahui ho. All right. Thanks, everybody. Mahalo nui. Ipo malie. Very fun. Morning front row, we're getting set up. I think we're almost good. Yeah, we're 
getting situated and um, we'll wait for the front row to also uh, get ready with everything and then we can get started. Never mind, it's above your pay grade. <laughs> huh? We're going to have a group photo of everyone. I don't know what she's talking about. What are you guys talking about? What does that have to do with the dive? Nothing. Yes, please. Someday I'm going to have a button that's, you know, Dan's button that makes everything. <laughs> I do have I do have a secret button, but somebody. It's the problem is the secret button doesn't do the five computers. <coughs> within my immediate reach. <laughs> all right, front row. We're all set in the back row here. Roger. Uh, you probably heard no Niskin yet and um, no rock yet. So we're coming up on waypoint four and our mission is to find loose rock. Roger. <laughs> we're going to be See if the see if the ship will do two eight five. Check. So uh, one thing to be aware. Hold on before you do that move. Let me get out uphill. And see what we got. Um, when in general, when the winds and the weather are up. <coughs> what is that? Look, flowers. Bones? Sponge? Bones? Spongy bones. <laughs> Do you know what it is? <laughs> no, it looks weird. Zoom in on that. Pile of whatever it is. Oh, come on here. Yeah, they look they like bones. Yeah, they might. I think so. Or maybe or a bunch of pile of sponge yeah, stalks, I think. sponge stalks like together because the tissue here looks like spongy. This one looks spongy. I wonder how they all ended up in a pile there. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe the current. I don't know. Spongy. Yeah, you said it's pretty strong, right? Spongy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Um, okay. What was I saying? Uh, so if we ask the ship to um, basically go somewhere where it struggles, um, what can happen is um, the DP system struggles, struggles, and then says, I give up, I give up, and then the ship shift. Uh, ship, that's not exactly what it says, but anyways, the ship will uh, drift. So, um, tonight it's probably a good idea that if we all <coughs> are watching uh, this, so Jacob can bring up the Rob Nav over there. And also you can tell on your, so the other one I watch all the time is the ship speed. And then, of course, overground should be aware of both of those. So all those numbers are in front of all three of us here. And uh, yeah, it's it's nice if we notice it early on, then it <coughs> doesn't really affect the dive. We just kind of get out in front of it and uh, go with it, depending on. <coughs> so if they do. Uh, have to reset the DP. They'll probably drift uh, at, usually aft, but not always. It depends. So it's just something to be aware of. And you know, if we know what the terrain is in front of us, we can. We don't have to uh, run away from the bottom. We can. Some of the coolest things I've seen on this system is when uh, Nautilus has been on holiday, DP holiday. That's true exploration there. Cucumber. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, for that reason, I like to see the track track line of it. Yeah. You, you can zoom out a little more or something. And chitin. Yeah, make it smaller. Ooh. Yeah. The weather's trending down, so I imagine, you know, it's not, it's below 20 now, so. I don't know what the current is saying there. Is it still ripping? Off the side. Yeah, that's only a one knot, one knot current. One point one knot. And for any folks wondering what DP is, um, I believe Dan is talking about dynamic positioning system, which basically helps keep the ship in one place when we're trying to do a dive and move accordingly as we want it to. But feel free to add to that description if you want to. Dynamic positioning, it uh, yeah, keeps it in position or moves <coughs> wherever we tell it. So when Mia calls a move uh, 20 at 315, she's basically telling the ship to move 20 meters at a bearing of 315, or 315 degrees or where I come from, northwest. And there's, I believe, like uh, jets kind of shooting out water that help keep the ship from moving too far in any direction, basically, so we can stay on spot, right? Um, that's the physical propulsion, uh, what moves the ship. Yeah, there's a, a jet pump in the back and a, um, a bow thruster in the front. But all that is tied into a kind of a there's a model, a computer model of the ship and its thrusters and all all of its sensors. So a wind sensor and um, knows what the engines are and, and the model um, kind of counteracts the forces that <coughs> are acted on the ship. Hmm. Yeah, thanks for that helpful explanation. Um, I'll go ahead and jump in for a second and just say hello to everyone joining us today from the US, UK, Australia, Germany, Canada, Singapore. Another 20. Oh, I'm ready. <coughs> yes. Sorry. No worries. Uh, um, Serbia, the Philippines, Norway, Netherlands. Italy, Greece, France, Finland, and Bangladesh. 
Um, we're so glad you're coming over to Nautilus Live and exploring with us. Today we are at um, Gardner Pinnacles. We're located roughly 500 nautical miles northwest of Oahu. Um, and this area was previously explored. Several dives were conducted by the Hawaii Undersea Research Laboratory uh, to their maximum depths of 2,000 meters. And then 2015, NOAA, the NOAA ship Okeanos Explorer um, also did a dive to 2,085 meters. So um, today we're gonna do our own dive and um, check this site out and also record observations and samples of the biology and geology. And um, this is again the midnight watch or dead man's watch. And um, this might be our last midnight watch because uh, this is our last dive of the Ala Aumawana Kaiuli expedition. Uh, so it's been a really amazing experience so far and we hope uh, this dive will continue to um, finish off our dive record with a with a bang. So um, with that, uh, we can go ahead and do some introductions. Um, and if you would like, as we introduce ourselves, we can share just like a little um, good memory that we've had during our expedition. But if you're not feeling in the mood to share, that's totally fine as well. Um, so I'll go ahead and start. Um, my name is Kara again. I uh, serve as the Science Communication Fellow and help share some of the different photos and stories going on uh, aboard the ship and share that research. And when I'm not here, I'm based in Guam uh, at the Guam Coral Reef Initiative serving as the Seagrass and Mangrove Conservation Coordinator. And one of my favorite memories so far on the ship has just been um, one night when we all went up to that top deck, the monkey deck, and looked at the Milky Way together. That was just, it really made my heart melt to be looking at the sky together. So um, with that, I'll go ahead and pass it on to my right, Hans. Would you like to share? Sure, sure. Yeah, thanks for joining, folks. The Midnight Watch, Dead Man's Watch, Middle Watch. It's good to have several names. My name is Hans Van Tilburg. I am Maritime Archaeologist Historian for NOAA's Office of National Marine Sanctuaries. I'm sitting in the watch lead chair, assisting the watch and running the still cam. And there have been a lot of wonderful moments. Um, something that was very amazing and, and poignant for me and the other archaeologists and historians watching I guess must have been the chrysanthemum crest at the bow of the flagship area aircraft carrier Akagi at some 5,400 meters beneath the surface. Just simply being able to reach that depth and take some of those images was quite amazing. Um, that and watching the brittle stars parachute off of corals <laughs> for no apparent reason. I'm sure there's a reason they do it. <laughs> I think it's recreational. I've never seen anything like it before. I suppose Did it just that. happen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, that's that's my small contribution. Upashana. Yes. Uh, thank you so much, Hans. Uh, sorry, I... Week 12. Yeah. Um, Looks like a fossilized yeah. beak. beak. Wow. Another whale beak? Mm -hmm. That's what it looks like. Rare. 40? Yeah, mm -hmm. so uh, I'm Upashana Ganguli. I am, uh, I study deep sea corals, specifically the evolution of a group of deep sea octocorals, the sea pens. I am a PhD candidate at the University of Louisiana at Lafayette and hoping to finish my PhD in the next year and move on to other fields of research in the deep sea and octocorals um, and honestly I'm sitting here and cannot really think of one experience that I can uh, single out because it has been a wonderful experience overall working with people getting to know them getting to know about the studies and from the different fields of study that everybody comes from being on these watches and getting to experience the, a new place, uh, explore the sea mounds, explore the biota that's there, uh, seeing various organisms that I had just seen images of before or read about but never seen them in person. This is the closest to in person that we can get when it comes to uh, the deep sea. It's obviously not going to be as 
like an in-person if it's on land. But so it has been a great experience overall. There's lots of memories. And I have been happy to have been able to contribute to this expedition and hoping to have the great last few days here on the ship. And with that, Taylor Ann. Hi, I am Taylor Ann. I am the science manager and data logger on this watch. Um, it is my job to log all observations of everything we see from biology to geology. Um, and I can't, I also can't think of one moment, um, but I would say all of the wet lab interactions that I've been able to have uh, leading the wet lab and giving other people the ability to take the lead in the lab and giving them hands-on experience with processing samples and teaching them how to write um, descriptions and just how to process different types of samples. I think that really showed me my passion for teaching people one-on-one um, -on -one once again. And yeah, that was really beautiful. And I think the first night after we processed samples, uh, we processed until the sun came up and then wow. walked out and saw a rainbow uh, in the sky and the Nautilus was actually going right in the middle of the rainbow and many of you were there and remember that and it was really special um, yeah. and I will never forget that. It was beautiful. That was an amazing moment. Yeah. Thanks for reminding me of that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah of course. Um, and with that, I'll pass it on up to you, Mia. Thanks. Uh, I'm Mia. I'm serving as the navigator and when I'm not uh, navigating, I'm uh, serving as a seafloor mapper. Uh, it's hard to pick one moment. I definitely, in terms of the archaeology, coming down on the Akagi, for the, we're on watch when we came down first, and it was really exciting to see that come out of the depths. Um, and then I've enjoyed just being with everyone and having, it's like when you're in a movie theater and you're all reacting at the same time to something <laughs> special, when we see octopus or all the sea stars and, you know, finding my, I guess, new passion for sea stars I didn't know I had. <laughs> um, and yeah, and just learning with everyone, uh, seeing Jake get really excited when he learned how to, the first time he drove Herc and, you know, supporting him as a team, that was a really great moment too. So I really liked all the moments where we worked together and had, you know, just like got to react together and learn together pass it on over to Dan. Uh, good morning, good evening. I'm Dan in the Herc chair. Uh, I too don't probably have one memorable. I have lots of good memories here. Um, the Sea Daisy was mm -hmm. probably one of them. The Benthic Tina 4. As far as stuff we've seen, that's uh, very cool. Uh, Probably the most memorable one for this expedition is the look on Jacob's face when the first time I handed him the uh, craft manipulator Aww. controller. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't seen Complete that photo, in the headlights, yeah. but now he's an old pro at it. <laughs> it's been uh, it's been a great journey with everyone to see the uh, progress that we've all made here in this room. Yeah, if you haven't seen that photo, I think it's posted on our social media, and you can just see Jake's face, like, lighting up, so definitely check that out. That was an awesome picture that you took. <laughs> um, nah, thank you, Dan. Thank you, everybody. Okay, so um, I'm in there. Please. My name is Jacob. I'm from Ever Beach, Oahu, and I am serving as the ROV engineering intern, and yeah, oh, um, it's hard. I'm... I'm hard to pick one I think just being in the presence of all these awesome people in this room you know being able to learn so much from Dan of course um, okay, came, going. came in here with hardly any experience but I'm leaving here with so much and um let's do 40 yeah I guess just the pelinas I made with everybody and all the relationships and that I will keep forever so mahalo you guys and thanks for all the support everybody love it Jaina. Aloha, my name is Jaina. I am from Hilo, Hawaii, and I'm the video engineer intern. Um, Jake, you kind of stole mine. I was also going to say the people. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm really grateful for this watch um, and for all y'all creating such a safe space for everyone to speak up. Um, it's been really awesome getting to know everyone on the ship, but yeah. 
Wouldn't want to do a 12 to 4 with anybody else. <laughs> well, thanks so much for sharing, front row, and um, we'll bring it all the way back around to Elsa if you're um, ready to share. Yeah, so um, hi everyone, Ali. My name is Elsa, and I'm a supporting scientist here on the 12 to 4 watch. And I'm also a researcher at the Palau International Coral Reef Center. And, um, Nautilus deckhand. <laughs> deckhand. <laughs> and wet lab assistant. And XPT shooter. <laughs> XPT shooter. Um, Artist. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I've been really, really grateful and humbled that everyone has been so gracious and um, patient and willing to teach. Um, anything that I'm willing to learn, which is everything, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been just such a great learning experience. And um, Taylor Ann stole what I was going to say, which was the, <laughs> that was a, a pretty amazing <laughs> moment. Um, Cause we were all, we were actually up all night processing samples. And then um, I had just finished showering and I came out, I was about to eat breakfast. And then uh, I saw her and Kukui downstairs on the deck and they're like, have their phones whipped out, like staring at the sky. So I, like I rushed down. A anytime you're on a boat and you see people looking at stuff, you're like, I need to go look at what they're looking <laughs> <Yep>. at. <laughs> so yeah, that was a really um, awesome moment to see Nautilus sailing under the rainbow. Um, but yeah, I think it's been all of those little moments put together. And for me, it's also been like, I've been able to see the sunrise. Well, maybe not always the sunrise, but I've had a chance to see every sunset wow. <laughs> that we've been on, uh, that we've had since we've been here. Some have been good, some have been not so good. But um, I think reconnecting with nature and like the ocean and where we are in our place and all everybody here. Um, yeah, so can't really can't state overstate how great of an experience it's been and it's great. been awesome coming in here for four hours every afternoon and every um every early morning with you guys so looking forward to a great last watch yeah thank we you we ride so much. one last time <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what we're looking at is very <laughs> odd and weird. The top one definitely. Wow, sorry, I had to in jump that in. <laughs> so the top one looks like a crinoid. Maybe it's a stalked crinoid, and uh, which has a bunch of hydroids growing. But I have no like these look like solitary hydrozoans. But why are they growing on the stalk? I have so, no idea. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, probably they're growing on the stock that's all i can i think i can make out from this the well, top well, yellow can, looks uh, like a crinoid push in there on one of the yeah the joints because this is a stocked crinoid and uh, yeah, i think you're right i think it must we oh, just why does it have two branches oh, so there's, there's like something two crawling individuals up like on two the bottom. yeah uh, like mm. two individual solitary hydroids okay. growing on the stock. Okay. And Not usually like solitary one. hydroids make their own stock? Is that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Wow, yeah, this is very interesting. And it then is we saw how that crinoid closed up. Yes, yeah, so that is a crinoid. I'm sure about that. Okay. Those pink things also look individually like solitary hydroids. So the only uh, logical reason is that they are growing on top of the stock of the crinoid. And there are a bunch of okay. hydroids growing on it. Thank you so much. We this got was a scoot. A very yeah. odd. Can go um, wide, please. Observation. I'm so sorry. I'll say I can't do short. Yeah, probably. Yeah, sure. No, 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 that was good. Wow. That would also get added into the list of. Oh, okay. So there's confirmation so we, yes. from us. Yeah. Also, that we made a decently okay guess. I w I've just never seen. Yeah, yeah. That I haven't seen a stock crinoid yet either. This oh, okay. expedition. So that was. No, not on this expedition. No. I think they saw like a giant hydroid on one of the other watches. Mm -hmm. I think we yeah. also saw a giant, like a decently big size uh, stocked crinoid one day. Um. And we have. Can you come up a bit there for me? Are coming up? Yeah, I'm not sure what the tether's doing. Right. And 
I forgot about the rocks, sorry. If we want to get a rock, it is we'll another we'll have to hold position. So yeah, you know, I know we're probably coming up on a, a slope break, and I know Val has talked in the past about, you know, rocks that slope breaks are, are sometimes good choices. A lot of these look welded down, but if we if we get to the slope break and we see something that looks loose, I know for, for people watching, it might look like there are a lot of rocks here. We heard from the last watch that a lot of times they're kind of glued down by the crust that forms, and um, sometimes it's challenging to find a loose one. They, they hadn't found one yet. But Dan, if you think you see one that's the right size that could be loose, we could try for that, or we could get closer to this slope break. Right. Yeah, we've there. been we've been doing some uh, larger steps than usual with the uh, vessel to try and get to the steep bit here. Yep. But these uh, these look welded down, but some you know if you see one, it's starting to sharpen up a bit there. <coughs> We generally try to take a geological sample at the deep part at the start of dives, and then opportunistically at certain intervals or around certain interesting features. Plus, um, you want to hold position here? This seem to be coming up here. Bridge now. Can we hold position? Thank you. Our geological guidance is something about grapefruit-sized, wedge-shaped, angular, and then even the geologists don't know until they cut it apart and start looking inside what they've got. Yes, and we are looking at another stocked crinoid, and we can see that the arms at the top are slightly bigger than the previous one that we saw. And there's a small, wide, uh, plumerella, uh, colony by it as well. I think there's also a tiny little cup coral down there. Oh yes, yes, I see that now. It's like upside down. Hanging upside down. I don't see the cup coral. It's on the ledge. It, yeah, it's it on the other side. It's a small one. I know it's one of your favorites. Mm. Missed it. That's another beautiful bamboo coral web. And we have some dead sponges in this area. That is what it looks like. And there's another bamboo coral at the back as well, which can be one of the sparse branches. Could be a clue that there's a steep cliff in our future that the sponges are yeah. falling off of. Yeah, that's actually a reasonable idea. That's what the contour lines say. <laughs> And I'm looking for something that looks loose, and I'm not seeing it yet. You uh, don't think any of these would be loose? What about this pile? I'm, yeah. de I'm deferring to Dan. He's got way more. He knows what's yeah, loose. Yeah, it's hard to say until we... Poke it? Yep. Poke it, yeah. We're still swinging in, are we? Or it looks like yeah. there's like a lot of dead Aspidoscopulus sponges, the ferrate sponges. What about that one? Yeah, I can, uh, as soon as you get telemetry there, Jacob, we can poke around and see what you get. Gently poke around. It's a wedge. I think 
think there's a tiny pink cup coral to the left, upper left there, on that rock. Uh, let's poke Which around, see if any of the grapefruit round ones are loose right there. Doesn't it look more spongy? Oh, oh yeah, I see. I think Mia was talking about this one here. Oh. Yeah, that's the, you're right. There's and we'll go ahead and pause chat during two uh, round sampling. Ones, uh, right there where the lasers are. Lasers on that one. Just a quick poke, man. Touch it. Oh. Uh, the one next to it, maybe. Is that one move? I didn't see it move. Right. Nope. You can try and pry it a little bit more. Push the vehicle just a little bit. Well, they're welded in. Yep, they're welded yeah. in. Okay, nice try. We got that elbow up again. Yeah. Do you want to roam around here a bit, or should I call in another ship movement? Uh, let me get out ahead here. Oh, oh we got the manip out. We'll try another spot here. Maybe when we get closer to the base of the ridge, there'll be stuff that fell or something, you know? Still loose. <coughs> Hope dies last. Yeah. Um, good for another 20 now. 20285? Yes, please. Still going up the hill here. Bridge nav. Can we please step to zero at 285? Thank you. Yeah, that looks 